this is Andrea Huss of SoulRealignment.com and I am here with Erin Doherty and we are talking about her experiences with Soul Realignment. Erin, remind me how long you've been doing this work? Not very long actually. I started the course last year and I went through it probably in three and a half months I think oh, and wow, just got my great. certificate uh, in December. Uh -huh. So I'm pretty much a newbie. Fantastic. So tell me what drew you into the program. What made you decide to learn to read the Akashic Records? Yeah, you know, I had never heard the term Akashic Records before last August, um, but I've been somebody who's been drawn to, you know, spiritual literature, self-help literature, so I kind of read a lot around that, around intuitive readings when I was younger. Um, but literally, this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but I'm sure you're used to that. <laughs> to this point in my life where I was making decisions about my career. I'm a teacher, but I wasn't really happy where I was. I sort of felt like I, I, I needed to grow a little bit more, and I wasn't sure what to do or where to go. And so I was feeling really you know, stuck in the month of August, and then I went to bed one night, literally was woken up by a booming voice <laughs> that said everything is accelerating, and I felt this whoosh of energy in my body. And it was a little disconcerting, but I went with it, you know, and then was like, okay, I don't know what that was, went back to sleep <laughs> the morning. Yeah, it's like, what are you going to do except go with it, you know? I mean, we've all had these kind of weird occurrences, so no, it doesn't sound crazy at all. I mean, I've had a few interesting things like that happen. I just got up and I said, okay, I don't know what made me go to the internet, and I started typing in kind of my experience to get a sense of what was happening, hearing voices, but not in a crazy way, you know, that sort of thing. And so I started researching, and I found this other woman's website who offered intuitive uh, readings, and um, she mentioned that she trained with you in the Akasha practice, so I went onto your website, and that's, and then, you know, suddenly I just started doing a lot of research around Akasha records and what that was. And I saw a couple of your videos and just sort of felt drawn in and like, oh, you know, I should do this even though I didn't have the money or I thought I didn't have the money, but I, I, I kept feeling like this was where I needed to go, so I made it work. It's and so it funny to me. Work. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. It's so funny to me how when people are drawn to this work, they know it. And I always, you know, people sometimes ask me about the modality and I'm always telling them, look, just look at it, listen to the audio lessons, listen to the videos. And mm -hmm. if it resonates, you will know. And it's like this weird, inexplicable draw, I think, right? Yeah. It's magnetic. You, you know. You know, you can't really, if you're a, an aware person, you can't ignore that. So that's what I went, I went with it, and, and I'm happy about it. So well, That's <laughs> awesome that you went with it. I mean, right there, that was sort of a gut instinct where you started trusting your intuition. Yeah. Yeah, that was the beginning. Again. Yeah. So tell me what happened for you intuitively as you went through. Yeah, it was interesting. It, um, you know, I went through the normal ups and downs. I think that a lot of um, people in the program went through as far as doubting my own intuition, and that happened. I mean, I, I kind of, I kind of knew that I was intuitive, and I and I trusted my intuition over my lifetime. But then again, when I was, you know, doing the reading, you know, I kept getting this voice in my head like, "Is this real? Am I doing this right?" And I had to go through that and kind of. And I know a lot of other people have expressed that, so I didn't feel alone. And but once I got over that hump. Um, and just sort of went, okay, I don't know if this is real or not, but I'm just going to go with it and see what happens. Yeah. And of course, I, I felt better once I gave my first practice readings because then I got feedback from other people and that really helped to build my confidence. Yeah. Well, and it's nice that were you reading in our support forum and reading about yeah. other people's... I mean, everyone yeah, goes through that whole, oh my God, am I making all this up? And it's yeah. amazing how our mind plays yeah. those little games with us. Yeah, the forum was very helpful. I, I kind of used that as a support group in a way, and just, yeah. even just reading other people's comments, um, just sort of feeling like I wasn't doing this alone, which yeah. helped, but I actually noticed just slowly how my intuitive ability started to grow as I was going through the program, and once I got over some of the initial self-doubt, it was like, boom, just that stuff started opening up, and my clear audience abilities came out a bit more. I've always kind of been able to hear my intuition in the form of words and phrases, but it really took off mm -hmm. and started growing from this program. See, I love that you're talking about the self-doubt piece because I think not enough people address it. You know, I think as intuitives, there is always this little part of us that is 
the resistant part of the mind that likes to whisper to us and goes, maybe you're crazy, you know? And I think, I think as intuitives, we all have like this slight amount of fear. And actually I worry more about the people who don't have that, Okay. you know, as a teacher, because it's when people don't have that, then I sort of worry about, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like the super overconfident people that have no no reason for confidence. Where it's like the people that audition for American Idol, you know, they're a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. so I was, but I love that you're talking about um, the self doubt. What do you think allowed you to not get stuck there? Well, um, like I said, self self doubt isn't new to me, so I've sort of been dealing with it all my life. So mm-hmm. I had some you know, strategies in place of how to just go through it. Like I said, anytime I tried anything new growing up, there was always the self-doubt mm-hmm. in there saying, oh, you can't do this, what are you doing? This is crazy, I can't believe you're taking that job or going here, but I never really listened to it. You know, I'm just, I realize it's just kind of an annoying sort of background voice that comes up, and usually it comes up when I'm doing something um, that's going to push me towards personal growth or, and it may be challenging, but I usually feel like I hear that voice whenever I'm doing something big. So I kind of know that maybe it's just, I don't know why it's there, but it's kind of a good sign. So I just kept moving through it. And there were some nights when I would try to work on my practice client readings. And one time I think I was just sort of having a low energy day and I just felt like I wasn't getting the answers very accurately. So I just stopped. I just stopped. Whenever I would feel like my ego came in and just started sabotaging me, I would just put the pendulum down, close the book and go and just do something else. And, and the next day I felt better. Yeah. You know, so that, that's just kind of what I did. I, I didn't push through it sometimes and I just stopped and took a step back. That's actually a really great thing to do. And it's a, it's a good practice because when um, we don't allow the ego to take us for a ride and we're disciplined mm-hmm. enough to just stop because at that point ego takes over and yeah. we stop, it's literally like telling a three-year-old, we're not going to yeah, engage, I'm, you yeah. know? <laughs> time out, exactly. It's like, time out. <laughs> no, you don't get to mess with me today. I will be back tomorrow. No, that's that's great. That's great that you have that level of self-discipline, which I think is also really helpful for people to hear because mm. it's not just in this modality that it happens with intuitive development overall. I think... Mm. Um, there is so much of the self-doubt that comes in and I love what you said about it really comes up when we're about to go to our next level of personal and spiritual growth. Yeah, yeah. I found that to be true and I, and I heard from a lot of my friends who've had similar experiences doing something that pushes themselves to grow and then suddenly the fear comes up and the, the ego tends to just want to stake its ground and feel safe. So oh, yeah. you know, I sort of ignore it, sometimes put it in a timeout and it behaves eventually. <laughs> it is like training ourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just like, oh look, there's the self doubt again. Yeah. Nice try. Mm-hmm. Gonna keep going anyway. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's a really, really valid strategy. Without I think and it sounds like you didn't try to do away with the thoughts. You just acknowledge them and move forward. Yeah, because I think I've learned from the past just kind of getting in the negative mindset. If you feed that energy, and you know from the work we do with Soul Realignment, you feed the negative thought forms energy. They're just going to grow and beat you up. So, yep. you know, I try not to give give it a lot of energy. It's something that's hard. Yeah, you know? it's sometimes a really great idea to give voice to those mm-hmm. doubts, you know, because when we ignore them, it's a little bit like, ignoring a two or three year old it ends up throwing yeah. a big old tantrum oh, so okay. it's like when we when we really listen to the self-doubt acknowledge it honor it mm-hmm. and at the same time do what we're going to do anyway without buying into it that's really i think a good balance so what was it like when you presented for the first time well i was nervous of course um but luckily it was somebody i've known that i didn't know them really well but i knew them through mutual friends so it sort of felt like okay, I'll, I'll try it out on this person first because she seemed pretty open uh-huh. to these kinds of readings and she had intuitive readings in the past, so I felt like she was a safe one to start out with. And the reading actually lasted for like an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I would be able to talk that long or you know, just to be able to go through everything. Um, but it was really good. We had a nice back and forth. She really resonated with a lot of stuff. And so that was really validating because as, as, as I was going through the program, you know, other than the self-doubts, I just put down the answers and I didn't question them, but there was that nagging doubt, hmm, 
you know, what if what if I got it wrong? Uh-huh. And, you know, for me, I don't really feel like there's a wrong and right so much. I just feel like, you know, if the client resonates with it and gets something out of it, that's great. Absolutely. And so that's what happened. And that really helped. And then the second reading I did, I was a little bit more confident. The first time I accepted money, that brought up some other issues. Ah, had, so. okay. So then the stakes were higher, so. Yeah. 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 And, for a perfect stranger, that was also, that was more freeing in some way, mm-hmm. but also a little unnerving, you know, taking money from somebody and wanting to give them the best service, but at the same time, it was like, I just had to, again, go through it and hope for the best. And it was <laughs> how, so how was it for I, I mean, I so agree with you that reading for total strangers, I mean, I remember the first time I did that, and it was absolutely terrifying, <laughs> absolutely yeah. terrifying. Um, and at the same time, I I really had no way of getting in my own way because I didn't know yeah. this person at all. So did you feel yeah. liberated at all by I, it? Doing the reading itself, I felt more liberated doing the reading for a perfect stranger. Yeah, you had I, no preconceived I, notion. Yeah. yeah, no baggage. I couldn't bleed over any of my, you know preconceived notions of who they are or anything. And so it was kind of like going in there blind, but it was a good blindness. Yeah. You know, it was like I wasn't searching for particular things. So mm-hmm. I felt like in some ways it was free. And then, of course, I had to get over the initial nervousness of, you know, presenting it to them and explaining things and seeing, you know, okay, are they going to get any of this? Is it going to make sense? And, you know, even people who aren't very responsive, you know, you get some clients who are, they want to talk for an hour and they resonate with everything and some people are just mm, okay and then they might resonate with some things more than others and I kind of learned that you know I just had to present it and I couldn't worry about their reaction mm-hmm. so much that was hard but I, I and I'm getting there I've only done a couple of professional readings so I'm kind of learning that process that's awesome well you know what's really interesting is some clients I, I know how I am as a client When I'm a client, and I always advise people to be the client because that allows us to stand in compassion and really um, Mm -hmm. just just remember what it's like to be the client because, you know, they get nervous too, right? It's like, what's she going to say? Um, But uh, I tend to be very quiet as a client, which is really hard to believe because I talk a lot in real life. But but I get very quiet because I just want to absorb it. And I don't really ask a lot of questions, so I'm that very unnerving, quiet client (laughs) that just listens and takes it all in and just goes, "Uh uh-huh, mm-hmm. And um, whenever I get someone like me on the phone, it used to make me a little crazy, and then I realized that they were just like me, just taking it in. Sure, now that's a good, good exercise. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. But so now you are building your professional practice. Yeah. Yeah, one person at a time, one client at a time, and trying to get referrals, and I've gotten a few, and, you know, I think it's just, like I said, I've really only started this in January, so I think I'm doing okay. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So, so people are already sending you referrals. Yeah. Yeah, See? some of my friends, yeah. and, you know, the siblings and somebody else who's interested in this, and then I did get somebody random off the internet, I don't know how they found my website already asking for a property clearing, so that was interesting doing that. Mm -hmm. And I did property clearings on my family as I was practicing, and my practice clients. So, you know, I've gotten a lot of feedback from from the readings that I've done. And so it's been really helpful because I I start adding more pieces of information to the puzzle. You know, you give us a lot of material that we can work with, but then, then it's good for me to just kind of what I'm reading for, let's say, one soul group, and then I get their perspective and I add it mm-hmm. to the mix. And so yeah. it, it kind of helps me feel a little bit more natural with it. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing. You know, the course is the starting point. Yeah. And I fully, yeah. the reason I don't have other people teach it as a modality is because everyone is going to create their own perspective, and I want you guys to have that freedom. Yeah, no, very and good. at the same time, if, you know, everyone starts teaching it in their own different way, then the modality will totally lose what it is as a modality, right? <laughs> so then it's going to get, yeah. get yeah. A, little, a little crazy. Yeah, but I really think that's wonderful if you're starting to get your own perspective on the different mm-hmm. aspects. Yeah. And people are resonating to that. Yeah. 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 That's just putting it in their, their context and hearing their stories and how, you know, the different piece of the puzzle, you know, made sense to them uh-huh. and the backstory and that stuff. So it was really kind of interesting seeing that unfold. So how has it been for you personally? What what has shifted for you in your own life? A lot, actually. It's um like I said, I also had a reading done and a clearing and, and it really um 
resonated with me and going through the 21 day clearing process I was resistant to it it was funny because I'm not the most consistent person so I <laughs> having to do something every day I was like oh my god but I did it after you know maybe 12 days of doing it, it was like okay no big deal and I started to feel a shift and I got a lot more intuitive information around my own blocks and, and how they were kind of dissipating and just even noticing my own thoughts changing where I might have had a little bit more self-sabotage or self-doubt around going into my own business. Those thoughts were starting to fall away or not have so much power. Mm -hmm. um, also, like I said, the Claire audience came up again and just my natural intuitive abilities that I had from a child that I kind of put them away yeah. came back. So well, that and that's what we do, right? I think because when we're energetically sensitive, I know that I was completely shut down until I was 32, 33 years old. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. 32, yeah. So it's it's um it was not safe to take that out because I didn't know how to manage it. Yeah, that's exactly it. I feel like I sort of was a train wreck in my 20s because I didn't know how to manage all of the stuff coming in. I mean, most people are a train wreck in their 20s, but I sort of had the added benefit of being intuitive yeah. and very sensitive to energy and soaking up everybody's emotions. and It was just craziness, so I just shut it down because I think I just felt like I wasn't ready. I didn't have the tools to kind of figure out how to manage that yeah. until now. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, and it's so funny when we shut down our sensitivity, unfortunately, we also su shut down our connection to our higher self, and then we end up wow. in careers and lives that are so not yeah. resonant to who we are at soul level. So now that you're taking things into a new direction and moving into your own business, mm -hmm. how do you feel about who you are? I feel like I'm coming into myself. And yeah. again, it's a process. It's not like boom one day you're just yay, I'm perfect. But um, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of bored. But you know, so I, I sort of feel like I'm I'm moving into a lot. I feel the alignment happening. Um, even though I'm taking baby steps in some areas, and I still have my day job, and I still like being a teacher. But I felt like I can use those skills to be a teacher, maybe, but in the intuitive field. So I'm Absolutely. sort of kind of taking all the experiences and education I had and using it for what I'm doing now rather than thinking, oh, I, I wasted all this money and time training to be a teacher, but I'm not really, that's not really what I want to do for my life. So I'm trying, I'm trying to use everything. And you and will, like, and you absolutely will. You know, I trained as an opera singer. Yeah. And <laughs> you, I mean, what does that have to do with being a psychic? Yeah. Nothing except yeah. You know, now when I'm on stage or on video or anything, it just, it's not hard, right? Yeah. So it all comes back around. The other thing that I realized that opera gave me was that um, I'm very good at rejection. I'm excellent okay. at being rejected. I really just, <laughs> I'm so used to it. You know, when you do auditions all the time, it's like, oh look, more rejection, right? So um, that, that actually makes us fearless as entrepreneurs. Yes. That, you know, that's it. It's, I was a very, very shy child when I was younger, and I grew up with actually a singer sister, a, a diva. Mm -hmm. So I sort of had that, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be like that. So I sort of shrunk back for a while and went inward. Um, and then I never thought I would be a teacher, but I decided to go back with my best friend. I decided to go back and get my degree in teaching in my late 20s. And I'm glad I did now. It was torturous for the first few months getting up in front of a class. And, but I felt like now looking back, that was training for what I'm doing now. Yep. It developed my confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not nervous anymore when I speak in front of a crowd. And so I sort of feel like I didn't know it at the time, but my soul was preparing me for what I'm doing now. Absolutely. So um, it's nice to have that perspective. And I think this program helped me get that perspective rather than sort of being stuck in regret for, you know, going to school for something I might not use or feeling like I wasted my time doing something, yeah. you know, because nothing is really a waste of time. Nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. It all comes back around and sometimes we don't realize the magic of how it all comes together. I always find that the really genius things that I do sort of, they're only genius in retrospect. Yeah. Like when I'm doing them, I don't even know why I'm doing them necessarily. But I just go with my intuition, and then two months later, I'm like, "Wow, that was really smart." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think we need that, you know, just that trust. I think um, trust is a big thing that I've learned to develop yeah. by going through this program because you just—it's all about trust, you know. Yeah. Um, even if you don't know if you're right or wrong, or 
you know, it's just about trusting your instincts, trusting your intuition. So it's a really, it was like kind of, like I said in um, the email, I sort of felt like I needed psychic training wheels, mm -hmm. you know, and so I can maybe one day stand on my own and feel more confident, but I needed that support. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, we all need that at some point, but yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about whether you're standing on your own or not. <laughs> off and next time when you up level you'll need a new set you know just for a little bit and then you take them off again and that's that's exactly perfect that's exactly right well and so in your everyday life do you find yourself taking action without necessarily knowing why and just going with your intuition more yeah a lot more um i actually pray a lot more and i what was interesting is i know in in your program you mentioned the archangelic realms and for a long time because i'm a recovering catholic i sort of just threw them through them out yeah you know like, oh whatever I have angels i don't believe in them but for some reason i had a transformation or a shift in my attitude towards the angels by going through this program and it was not expected or intended but now i pray to my archangels all the time mm -hmm. and it really i feel like it really helps before i'm going to give a session or a reading i'll pray to an archangel like come and guide me and whatever. And I sort of feel like that helps me a little bit um, feel less alone or like my ego's just there getting in the way. So I sort of call on my guys and yeah. call on my angel and I feel a little bit like I have a support team. And you so do. That, and that's the yeah. thing, you know, whether we call them energy centers or archangels or, yeah. or whatever, you know, what's lovely about soul realignment is we're really getting people from all kinds of religious backgrounds from, yeah. you know, someone was emailing me because they're from a Buddhist background and they had questions about reincarnation. And, yeah. you know, the lovely thing is that whatever terminology we use, we're just drawing on the energies that are available yeah. to us. Yeah. And those are neutral, right? Because they're just energy. Yeah. So it's that's wonderful yeah. that you figured out how to call that in to support you. Yeah, and again, I think it was kind of lifting these blocks that I've set up over my lifetime, you know, sure. having certain prejudices about ideas or things that I thought were more religious. But again, it's just like, you know, you can you can use these symbols any way you want. So for me, I just kind of have to throw out some of that baggage. So in a way, it was good. It allowed me to kind of get rid of some of that childhood baggage. Uh-huh. a lot freer. Awesome. About, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and less reactive, right? Because yeah. when you say you're a recovering Catholic, <laughs> it's, I always laugh at that because I completely get it. Um, and at the same time, it's so lovely to be able to appreciate the parts that resonate and not yeah. be reactive. Yeah, yeah. You know, because there's an energy that goes towards something when we react negatively to it too. It still has power over us. And it sounds yeah. like for you, it's like, you're yeah. you're done. Yeah, I, I feel like that was like ending that last bit of um, you know block I had. That's awesome. Because uh, I worked on a lot of things, but it was just like, oh, I can call on you. Okay, that's great. You'll help me. And, and just for me, it was more about being playful and saying, okay, I'm going to call on these angels and see what happens. You know, not expecting anything, but it was amazing actually. Kind of, you know figuring out how they were helping me or how I was feeling their guidance. And just, again, even if it was just me sort of giving myself permission to relax, then that's mm -hmm. good, you know. That's fantastic. Well, I so, so, so appreciate you sharing your transformation with us. And I think talking about overcoming self-doubt when it comes to intuition is just such an important thing to address. So. I know that's really going to serve everyone who's listening. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking out the time and for doing this work in the world. Thank you. All right.